Um, so here we've seen that what happens in the standard model when effort goes to infinity, we can also look at what happens in the rigid wage model, but you'll see it's, it's exactly the same. Here's the fact that wages are rigid or that they come from surplus sharing has no impact, so the same analysis carries through. So we can, we can just do it very quickly. Um, but we'll see that the, the same is true. There are no worker queues, although wages are rigid. So let's look at the model with a rigid wage. And let's look, let's use a labor market diagram. And, and you'll see through the labor market diagram, it's, it's pretty obvious what happens. We can put tightness on the y-axis, employment on the x-axis, labor force. Right, so um, labor demand, it has exactly the same properties as in the model with um, um, bargain wages. So the expression is a bit different, but we have a, we have a labor demand that's horizontal. Right, so that doesn't change, that's because the production function is linear. Uh, and the labor demand doesn't depend on uh, search effort. Okay, um, so what, hap what happens to F when effort goes to infinity? So we have to also look at the labor supply, which depends on tightness and also on effort here. Okay, so that's our, uh, that's just our, our, our labor market model, even with a model with rigid wage. Um, you know, uh, so equilibrium tightness is given by the labor demand it's here. Employment, we look at the intersection of the two curves and we get our employment here. Okay, and then the question is what happens when um, effort goes to infinity? Okay, so we know what's going to happen. The demand is not going to change. The labor supply is going to be uh, pushed as far out as possible. So your labor supply is going to look something like this. Right, because um, when the effort goes to infinity, the labor supply goes to infinity. Oh, sorry, not to infinity, goes to H. When effort goes to infinity. So what's going to be the new equilibrium? Well, the new equilibrium is going to be here at the intersection of the same old labor demand but the new labor supply. So L prime, we can call it, is going to be equal to H. Theta prime has not changed, still equal to theta. Uh, and so as we can see, this is a new equilibrium when effort has gone to infinity. So employment is equal to H, which means that unemployment U prime is equal to zero. And the unemployment rate of course is also equal to zero. Oh sorry. Okay. So there is no unemployment here. Uh, the equilibrium has shifted from here to here, and so as a result, unemployment has disappeared. Um, so here, when search effort is strong enough, all the workers are completely absorbed, and unemployment, uh, unemployment disappeared. So all the uh, so what we learned here is that even with rigid wages. Um, 
of course, yes. Here, what we see is that unemployment vanishes when people search uh, hard enough for jobs. And uh, as a result, uh, there is no lack of job in the model. What we've seen, the model cannot describe queues, in, in, uh, queues of workers in bad times. Okay. Uh, and so here, uh, you know, all of, basically what that means is that firms can absorb all the workers if they search are hard enough. So uh, all unemployment is, is uh, just frictional here. In that model. So that's um, exactly as in the standard model. Okay, um, and so here again, there's no uh, rationing, and so any policies that really boost. Uh, job search effort is going to really uh, reduce unemployment drastically. So we can see here for this question of whether they are queues of workers or not, um, the type of wage function that we use is equal to rigid wage or um, bargain wage have no effect. What matters is really that the labor demand has this very specific and you know very peculiar horizontal shape that it's perfectly elastic with respect to type. And so there's no notion of a number of jobs in the economy. If the supply is far out, you can, you know, if you can push the supply far out, you can absorb uh, all the workers that want to work. Okay? So now what we need to do is that we, it's not sufficient to introduce rigid wage, which was done you know, to get fluctuations in unemployment. We also need to introduce a concave production function, a downward sloping labor demand. Uh, and then that's going to give us that lack of job. That's going to allow us to have unemployment not all unemployment that is frictional. So we'll have some frictional unemployment and some rationing unemployment. We'll be able to describe the queues of workers in a bad time.